Hi everyone, I'm Bonnie Hunter. Welcome to Quilt Cam. It's uh, a wonderful um, opportunity to be here. And if you pardon my being a little bit scrambled, I've got a crazy thing going on with my Facebook business page where the page is completely blank other than the header. And in order for me to see anything, I have to click view as visitor. So those who are viewing as a visitor can see what's going on. I, as the owner of the page, have a completely blank page, so Facebook is always throwing us a whammy. I want to welcome you to Quilt Cam. This is a, a fun opportunity. We were supposed to do it tomorrow night. I switched it to tonight because the gas folks were supposed to come out to the cabin and hook up our new gas stoves tomorrow afternoon. Then this afternoon, after we'd switched everything around and arranged it to do Quilt Cam tonight, now they're not coming. <laughs> but we are going to keep it uh, tonight anyway because I'm ready to sew. First off, I want to apologize about my allergy voice. Everything is blooming in North Carolina. There are pink trees everywhere, and they are gorgeous, and I love them. However, they don't love me, and so my sinuses are under attack. There may be hacking and coughing and water drinking, and I've got cough drops in my uh, pocket, so it's kind of an allergy-laden quilt cam, but we're here anyway. So how are you? What are you working on tonight? If, you're never, if you've never joined me for quilt cam before, uh, quilt cam is something that doesn't happen on a regular schedule. It happens in and around my daily life when I have an evening home free and we can do it. Um, we were able to do a couple quilt cams successfully from our old cabin, but now that we've relocated to Virginia for our, our getaway cabin, we are living off of a half a bar of 4G on our cell phones up there. There's no internet connectivity as of yet. And it looks like um, the only connectivity we would be able to get at this point would be satellite internet. And I've not heard anything good about satellite internet, especially how much, um, how quickly you go through data and you are charged by the amount of data that you use. So streaming of things may not be possible there, but we are absolutely loving it. Um, I wanted to give this a, a uh, little bit of a, uh, see if I can see if we're, if we're going here. Okay, so that's going to come back up for me. I've actually got us going on my tablet live. And then the camera is resting on top of the laptop computer, computer so I can see how things are going. It's live over here. It's about five seconds delayed over here, but we are up and running and I'm glad to have you tonight. So what am I working on? Our leader ender challenge um, for 2016 into 17 is almost over. We're almost at the end of March now. The new one starts in July, around the 4th of July weekend. Um, this is this year's project. Hourglass units. All of these have been built in between the lines of chain piecing other things. The premise is you cut your little triangles ahead of time and set them by your machine and then you use these pieces as pairs in between the lines of your chain piecing instead of that folded over throwaway scrap of fabric. And in the course of the year, I've built this, oh, it's almost baby size um, quilt top here. The next row is ready to go on. So if you if you check the Hourglass Leader Ender Challenge under the Free Patterns tab at the top of the blog, it'll give you the parameters of what we've been doing. These have been cut from two inch strips with the Essential Triangle Tool, all the quarter square triangles. And all of the Hourglass units have been built and are ready now to go into blocks. I got them to this stage in Leader Ender fashion. Now I need to fast forward, so so I can get these rows on in a timely manner. I'm going to regular piece these. It may be cheating, but we've got to get these on here. After this row, the, after the green row, there'll be another single row of hourglasses in neutral. And I've got those just about ready here. Again, these were all pieced in between working on other things. So we're pretty much kosher here on, on all of this. The last row for this one is going to take this up to lap quilt size is the turquoise and neutral and those um, have not been started yet we will get them started after the green row is on um, what I'm sewing on tonight is black Betty I didn't have a chance to uh, switch out the machines I was thinking about it but we've been so busy with the move that I thought don't mess with perfection this is already set up here 
My seam allowance is already working with what I've got going on. So I am now just joining these hourglass halves or the, the two halves of the, of the block to each other. Now this is a part that I hate is the whole pinning process. And that's why it's taking me a little bit of time. So I have to take the, the two hourglass halves and pin to match. And when I am pinning to match, that means I want to put one pin through the point on the top layer and match it to the point on the bottom layer so that I know I'm going to get a good join there. And these seams are already pressed and opposing each other. So I do a, a two pin process. I get the first pin through and then the second pin I will pin just right above where the first pin the, that uh, match the points is and then I can remove the first one. Now if I had a, a foot with an edge guide on it, just the fact that this pin is sticking out um, further than the edge of my, my piece may cause a problem. I may not be able to stitch all the way to that pin. If I have a foot with an edge guide, I'll pin the other direction from inside out so that nothing is hanging out beyond my seam line. But because I use a little small low profile stick on guide, my pin can just ride right over that without a problem at all. So I don't ever feel the need to remove this guide until it's time to get the lint out of my machine. We're going to do this here. So I stitch right up to the pin and then when, I, when I'm at the pin, I remove the pin. I have bent pins and broken needles before, and you do that a couple of times, and it'll teach you never to sew over the pin. Okay, then we, moment of truth. Not so shabby, not so shabby. So sometimes it's worth pinning. I am a, a selective pinner. If it's a straight nested seam, like I'm making nine patches or four patches, then I don't bother to pin those in intersections if I can just hold them steady with my fingers. If it's a triangle point to triangle point, I'm going to pin. I'm going to pin. Speaking of nine patches, anybody who's been following me for a while, does anybody remember <laughs> what these are for? There are 193 of these indigo blues. These are the, the shui shui indigos from South Africa. In fact, they still smell like melted crayons. I love how they smell. Um, I pieced these, and I think they were supposed to be an alternate for something. They kind of look like a little X on point because this is all neutrals in the middle. I don't remember what I was doing with these. But this is, this is on the agenda. There's 193 of these. These can be a quilt in nothing flat if I can just remember what I was doing. And then also in the same bin, I've been doing some digging out and some uh, slimming down after moving into the new cabin. I felt like I needed to tackle some stuff here too. I've got all of these. And I think, we think, we think, I posted these on Instagram. These may have been left from the dancing nine patch um, baby quilts I did for my two nephews. And there's almost enough to do another one. So maybe these were waiting to see if another baby came down the line. I don't know. But they're awfully cute. And there's quite a lot of volume here. So does anybody else do this? Have you ever uncovered a project that you don't remember what you were thinking? And evidently, I spent a lot of time making these. Because like I said, there's 193. So that's what's going on in my studio. Share with me what's going on in yours. If you are watching on Facebook Live, I can't see where everybody is making their comments right now because of the way that the tablet's set up. The tablet is full screen, so I don't see um, any of the comments come up till later. But you can share your photos right there in the comments on Facebook while we're chatting here. And I will flip through those comments when Facebook is over and look at what you've posted. If you want me to share what you are um, making, you can send me an email to quiltville at gmail.com. That's my email address. Include your photo and uh, please include your name as well and your location so that I can share that with others. We'll flip through some of those uh, emails in, in just a minute. Um, one of the things I wanted to bring to everybody's attention, and I hope this doesn't embarrass him at all, but my friend Mark Lipinski posted on his blog this week um, his own live quilt um, 
Facebook Live feed that he and Jeff did earlier. He is in search of a kidney donor. His kidney, Beyonce, that he has uh, was lovingly gifted by Kidney Mary, um, is um, on its way out. And we need to do what we can to um, see if we can keep Mark around a little bit longer. So I want to encourage everybody to head on over to Mark Lipinski's blog. Um, it's Pickle Ro Studios at Pickle Road or something off the top of my head. I don't have it. But when I post this feed in my blog post tomorrow, um, I will write more about it and direct people over to Mark's page. If you've ever wanted to change somebody's life and you feel like you have a kidney to spare, um, this is just it just tears at, tears at my heart to watch everything that he has been through and we want to keep him around um, a lot longer. Um, if, if nothing else spread the word and offer up your prayers and send all of the, the positive good wishes and thoughts that you can to Mark as he faces a lot of dialysis and um, other challenges down the road. We love you, Mark. We want to keep you around a long time. Um, let's check in with the email and see what's coming on in. I've had a really weird thing before I even do that. I want to show you something. Facebook is being very, very strange for those of us who own business pages. When I visit my Facebook page, and this just started just this afternoon, this is what I see. I get a header photo. I have sidebar stuff. My middle, where all the posts go, is completely blank. There is absolutely nothing there. And so this was freaking me out a little bit before Quilt Cam. And I posted about it on my, my personal Facebook page. Is anybody else having this issue? And what I ended up doing was clicking view page as page, you know, view as page visitor. And that's what I've got it on right now. I'm looking at my own page as a page visitor. But when I have it on as my view, where I post and where I add my things, it's completely wiped out there is no feed there luckily on mobile on the tablet and on phones it does work but if you are having a business page issue please let me know that i'm not the only one because it's like facebook decided to wipe out all of the business side of of my facebook feed unless i'm viewing it as a visitor and when you're viewing it as a visitor there's some things that as a page owner you can't get to so we hope that's just a short glitch okay email email Oh, and on top of that computer issue, I got this notice from Microsoft that somebody had tried to access my Microsoft account and I had to go through that whole new reclaiming thing and do a whole new password. I can never remember the passwords. Diane Oaks, she says, ready for Quilt Cam. Diane, your, um, your letter came. I haven't opened it up yet. It's sitting on my desk. Um, I will get to that this afternoon or this evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. She has... What an allergy thing is just, oh, oh, cute. She's working on her chunky churn dashes. So we were in Michigan just last week and we had a chunky churn dash workshop. And this is so super fun. You make little strip sets out of inch and a half strips, cut it into four sections, and then add corner squares and a center square. These blocks were turning out so super cute. And she says, cut new hourglass blocks from different fabrics. I like them much better. Ooh. And she's got them up here on her design wall. Let's see. Oh, I like that orange. You're right. It makes the other colors pop. And you'll use the other ones um, in a different project. It's not that the other ones were wrong. They were just not the best for this project. So those are really great. Those are from Diane. So much fun. Pardon me. So over here, it's been... Um, Allegra D for the allergies and the sinus and the, and the everything and then a little bit of Robitussin for the cough from the sinus and I'm just kind of a mess but I'm glad that you're that you're here tonight. Susan Congdon says, hi Susan, just have a few more inches to stitch down on the binding and hope to get it here in a bit. Preparing centerpieces tonight for the Quilters of South Carolina Spring Meeting to be held here on Saturday, and there's 180 quilters coming to that spring meeting of the South Carolina quilters. Oh, this is gorgeous, Susan. So she's got kind of a soft, mossy green and lots of blues in her pineapple blossom quilt. 
that does look like spring that is absolutely beautiful it's like all of the blue hydrangeas that bloom in Aiken South Carolina in in the spring I love that gorgeous Paula says quilt cam yippee so I'm glad that you're able to see this even if it's not showing up on uh, my my page myself Quilt cam is just what I needed after a crazy work day. I'm working on a wool applique that I am going to frame. It's for a bridal shower gift for my nephew's lovely fiance. So I'm going to bake you this one. And the heart says, I'll show you the heart in a second. Where there is love in the heart, there is joy in the home. And she's got quite a bit of it put together there. So that's her wool applique that she's working on. That is absolutely beautiful, Paula. I love the slow stitching of handwork. I don't get enough of it. Teresa says, current Mountie project. She says, I'm working on a quilt for a member of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police in Canada who is retiring after 35 years, still in the planning stages. Love you and congrats on the new quilt villa. So she's from Montreal. Oh my gosh, I'm going to blow this up so you can see the panel in the center. So you can see the, the Mountie right there. He's saluting with all of the lovely Canadian emblems. But I love the flying geese that are dancing around the border there. That is absolutely stunning. There's some other shields. I'll move it over here. Some shields and other things going on. I love seeing the commemorative fabrics from other countries. So this is absolutely fabulous. From my neighbors to the north. So great to have you join us. Let it, let's do a little. I'm not getting very far on these. It's this dumb pinning thing that slows me down. So we did move cabin this past weekend. We closed on Friday and we on Thursday we loaded up. We have a, a, a covered trailer that pulls stuff to the dump and pulls stuff everywhere that we loaded up stuff in and I took the seats out of my van. So there's just the two front seats. Everything else is wide open in the back of the van. And that's the seam allowance is not going the right way. <clears throat> We were full to the gills and we left Sadie home last weekend. Somebody was asking, how's Sadie like the new cabin? Well, she hasn't seen it yet. She's getting so old and she wigs out if things are not the way she's used to having them. And she doesn't like boxes. She gets very confused with boxes and bubble wrap and shrink wrap and, and hauling stuff. So we decided it was best to leave her behind. But we went and drove to West Jefferson and closed on Friday morning. Our closing was at 9 a.m. And then we drove straight to Virginia to drop, drop, bleh, drop off load number one. And we unloaded that as quickly as we could, grabbed a bite of lunch from the, from the cooler we had brought, and then headed right back down. It's an hour's drive in between the two cabins to load up load number two. And our friend Rick met us and helped us with a, a third trailer, an open bed trailer for the couch that was too big to fit in the covered trailer. So we loaded up the couch and the chair and a couple of ottomans and a few other things on the open flatbed. And of course, on the way there, it rained. Of course, you have an open trailer. It's been sunny all day. It rained. So we had a, a slightly damp couch in the garage for a while, but it dried out overnight. And for uh, Saturday and Sunday, we made we made trips back and forth and back and forth. Monday, we didn't make any trips at all. We stayed up there and uh, waited for the satellite folks to come out and the lumber guy to drop off all of the makings of Hubby's shed. And uh, we'll do another load on Friday. We are almost completely out of the first cabin. The only thing that is left is like a rocking chair, my fabric cabinet, some big heavy crocs and other stuff that were not necessary for moving in but we are almost completely out of that place oops and i just broke my top thread how did i do that okay so us interrupt us here but at least we made it through the pinpoint and it's a good match but we'll thread this so Oh, I see. My whole spool fell over. This is my life on decongestants. Okay. 
just an Allegra moment. But this machine has this issue where I think the timing is off just this much because you'll be sewing along fine and then all of a sudden you get, it's like you hear the thread catch and then it snaps and it's it's done this since I got it and I think it's it's something that is such a fine thing that I can't see where to adjust it so it may go to the machine guy in West Jefferson and I'll have him give her a complete overhaul come on alrighty but you'll be sewing for no reason and then all of a sudden it's like the thread just isn't caught just particularly right and that one's good so it's this one I've changed needles I've tried to rotate the needle just a hair there's just something that every once in a while the, the thread snaps and I think it's just a barely a timing issue okay and one more I absolutely love this candy corn fabric it's not a Halloween quilt but the candy corns going in we have three of the same one in there nope got to put it with something else I don't mind if there's some duplicates but not three gonna match that spot and guess what there's two side by side same neutral not doing that either shoot for a different one that's the same two I think I needed more variety maybe I'm being too picky here that's better chances are you won't notice when it's all next to each other so Monday was a busy day we loaded lumber up to that the lumber could only be dropped part way up our drive because it's so steep and there's no place for a big truck to turn around and head back down and then on the way home <laughs> we were all the way to our exit all the way hundred miles to our exit and all of a sudden I see red and blue lights flashing behind me and I look down at my speedometer and of course I'm hitting the brakes because what did I do what did I do pulled over cop comes out ma'am can I see your license and registration did you know your tags are expired and I said my tags are expired I just got this car not even a year ago how can my tags be expired well we had transferred the plates from the older van to the newer van and somehow there was a mix-up and I've been driving on expired tags since last June I can't believe it it's like and my hubby is just laughing he's just laughing and of course the, the tag thing and keeping up on the vehicles thing is his thing he should have known better but ultimately it's my job to know how many times have I put up and down the hatch on the back of the van where the license plate is can you not see that this says June of 16 on it no of course not so yesterday I had to go down to Thomasville get the van current through May of 17 then take the van down the street to get an inspection go back to the DMV with my proof of inspection and get it current through May of 18 because I was not going to go do this again in two more months we were just going to do it so now I'm set ah, that's a good match okay I am set until June of 18 now watch me forget again the thing to remember about um, these little double hourglass blocks is make sure that these are always in the same orientation if you've got the light one on top on the right make sure that in your other blocks you don't switch it around and to the left ask me how I know okay I took a bunch of these apart because they all need to be identical so that when you put them together the greens are on the neutrals and the neutrals are on the greens or else you're gonna have green on green okay all right next email 
somebody please tell me that I'm not the only one who's ever missed changing my tags and updating my tags and please somebody tell me that that you also had to pay a two hundred dollar citation fine because you've been driving on expired tags for most of a year sherry oxley says it's been a while since i've been able to catch you live i'm working on the long arm tonight this is a quilt from my great nephew winston who was born on friday march 17th awesome so he's also a uh saint patrick's day baby my hubby's birthday is the 16th so we closed on the 17th, and I've been telling him all along that not everybody gets a cabin in the mountains and 42 acres of woods for their birthday, so he better be happy. Sorry you're struggling with allergies. Everything's blooming here in Arizona. Sniff, sniff. Sherry, there's no picture. You did, Maybe you sent it a second email, but this one doesn't have an attachment, honey. Send it. Send me another one. So, um, she didn't send me another one. Okay. Home Ec with Mel says, you aren't alone. Many of us are having the same issue. The only solution I have found, okay, so this is regarding the Facebook thing, is desktop, laptop, computer, or the Facebook app, but not the browser on the phone. My sewing machine guy, hubby, thinks you might have a burr somewhere in the bobbin area or on one of the thread guides. He says it's also possible there might be a groove from so much thread. Good luck. If you are wanting, willing to try to fix it home, he's just an email away. Thank you. I've checked all of the thread guides, and, and everything is, is smooth. There may be a burr underneath, maybe in the bobbin area or something like that. And, and at this point, I'm willing to take it to the guy and just have him run her through the, run her through the mill. Um, time is an issue, and if it's up to me and if I had to do it myself, I'd just set it aside and grab a different machine. So, but, but this is a, a problem I've worked with for a while. And no matter what I try, I can't find it. I can't find it. So maybe it's in the bobbin area, but thank you. Thank you for that. And I'm glad to know that I'm not the only one having the Facebook business page issue on the phone. It's fine. When I look on my laptop or my desktop and no matter which browser from internet Explorer to Google Chrome to Firefox, the page doesn't show. It's just a blank page. With a, with a Facebook header. So frustrating. Okay, Diane Motley says, car registration. Yes, we were pulled over in our hometown for having an expired tag. Sorry, Bonnie, but we were given just a verbal warning. Yes, but were you nine months on an expired tag? I don't know. This guy, this guy, I think he, I don't know if he was a newbie cop, but I feel like they were, I mean, he was out there on a highway where there's never a cop and just sitting there watching people go by. And I think that they're trying to make their, uh, their quota and that's fine. I'll, I'll just pay it. I've had folks tell me that I should fight it, grab all of my paperwork, go in, tell them what happened, go, go to court. Well, first of all, the court date is on a date when I'm not going to be in town. And time is money. And they may lower my fine to 100 bucks, But in the meantime, for the saving of that 100 bucks, I've wasted half of the day stewing about it and whatever. So I think I'm just going to pay it and uh, uh, blame the hubby <laughs> and, and call it good. Pauline says, Quill Cam, not doing anything but just feeling a bit blah. So just watching from Australia. Thanks for Quilt Cam. So hello to those who are down under. Eileen Tuss says, expired plates and fines twice. Oh, boy, Eileen, twice. This requires a sip. I did know one of the times, but the tabs were at home, and I hadn't had time to get them on. Second time, no excuse, no warnings for me. So she didn't get a warning either. So we are now in the expired tags club. Holly says, missions. My mission is to complete seven more of these blocks, which are surprisingly easy, and to remind you about your plates. It is on my calendar now. Oh, yay! So she's got her En Provence blocks all coming together. Once you get the units made, it's as simple as putting together a 25 patch. Five units across, five rows down. You can get that done, and they're looking awesome. I love your, your fabrics and your yellows and purples in there. It just looks like spring. Very nice. And Linda Bridges is making a t-shirt quilt. She says, this is a gift for my oldest son. 30 shirts from his younger years. And I wonder if I turn this sideways. Sometimes that allows the, oh, that's cool. 
so she's chosen all of his 30 different shirts from his younger years and she's paired it up with some really fun fabric and sashing making this t-shirt quilt for her son i think that's wonderful all righty should we do one more on here and i don't mind it if there's one or two that are matchy matchy but see this is how did this happen tell me i don't know it's going to stay. It's just going to stay, but not a third time. Okay. But I have I have loved these hourglass challenges. It's just been a very crazy year, and I think that it's not going to end up being a bed quilt this time. I think this one's actually just going to be like a couch-sized throw. My brother David um, is getting his he's receiving his doctorate in plant biology and um, it made me think that wow he needs a quilt and then you know my other little sister has a new home she she needs a quilt and I think I'm going to be going through my closets and rehoming several of the quilts that are not taught as workshops anymore Okay, we're going to do the pressing of these after quilt cam, but here's this one. Pretty cute. I think they're pretty cute. So these finish at six inches finished. Um, you can, of course, you could do these any size that you want, but I really like this scale, and I use the essential triangle tool and two-inch strips to cut these, so they came very easily out of my two-inch strip drawers. Okay, make another pair. Okay, no, maybe this one. Just looking for some different stuff here. That one works. I try to make my decisions quickly, but I don't want too much of the same stuff in here. Okay, pair to match, pin to match, second pin. This is the boring part, which is why I'm glad we're doing this for Quilt Cam. Uh, another funny story. So the cabin, I'm laughing, this is hysterical. So the very first night at the cabin, we wake up, it was, it was cold, it was dark, it was windy. And the first thing that hubby did when we were moving in, and he's filling the hot tub because it came with a hot tub. So I said, I need help with this stuff. What are you doing? Well, I'm filling the hot tub. Okay. So it was too windy. It's not it's not secluded. This hot tub is in the middle of the deck, so and it's sunken into the deck. So there's there's nothing to prevent the wind from whipping you around. So we didn't go sit in it. We just filled it up and watched the heater heat it up. The next morning we go out to sit in the hot tub. The birds, the sun's coming out, the birds are chirping. There are no neighbors around, so nobody can see us going out to the hot tub to drop our towels to climb in. And we climb in, and there's 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 something that is not the same as our hot tub. Our hot tub at home, you get up to your neck. I mean, you're all the way up to your neck in the water. Just just your your neck and your head are showing because you can you scooch down. This hot tub was like a wading pool. There's two little loungy bits, and you can kind of get down on these loungy bits, but it felt like you weren't in the water at all. And no matter how warm that water was, it was like we got into baby bear's chair. You know, this is like baby bear's hot tub and we are big people. And there is most of our bodies are out of the water. <laughs> and, and we just decided, okay, th this hot tub's got to go. This, this, this is, this is a, a hot tub for, for children or something. So, uh, but we, we laughed and we laughed and we laughed because we just saw the shape of the cover. You know, we looked it up. I said, didn't you notice when you were filling this with water that it was more shallow, that it didn't look as, as deep as ours? And he never noticed. So uh, but there was there was not enough warm water to cover you to be able to stay warm. I said, maybe this is just a soaking pool in the summer with no heat running at all. Who knows? But that hot tub's got to go. Okay, one more for the border. It takes six of these to go down the, the two sides, and then we'll do some across the top. And I honestly didn't think that I would get very far on these because every time I have grandiose ideas of, of how much I'm going to sew during quilt cam, 
it never happens. Okay. But no, no sewing has happened at the cabin yet. Maybe this weekend. Who knows? All I want is for the trees to stop blooming so this will go away. Alrighty. One more and we'll get back to the email. I really want to know what those nine patches were for. I know I had a vision. I even tried looking it up on the blog to see if I had posted about the making of those and what I had intended. I think they're supposed to be on point because of the X thing in them. I have no clue. Flamingos. I love it. Flamingos. This round is going on. Okay, so we now have Tammy says tags. She's going to tell us something about her tags. The hub says you didn't have enough business expenses. Tell him you're trying to help him out. Oh, on the cost of the tags? Can I deduct that as a business expense? My, my $200 citation? I don't think so. Uh, Carrie Ann says, yay for Quilt Cam. Hi, Carrie Ann. She says, I'm so excited to be able to watch you live for once. It's a beautiful day here in Ar Arcadia, California, but much like you, my allergies are acting up. I took some inspiration from you and have spent the last couple of weeks organizing my stash and taming the scraps. Tonight, I'm watching Quilt Cam while working on the next round of ribbons for my Rainbow Ribbons quilt before heading to my very first quilt guild meeting tonight so you're going to have a ton of fun with that carrie ann she's got a couple of pictures here so let's see if i can if i turn this sideways yep it's going to flip i know it so her picture is sideways in here but i think you can get the idea hang on i just gotta get a biggie so she's got a twisted ribbons quilt right there and if i turn the phone it's going to flip see so, but here's her stash also, and that's looking really good. You've got that, that cute little cabinet with the little buckets um, or the little bins right there that you can put your scraps and stuff. And then it looks like she's got fabric on the comic boards on the bottom. Looks great. Enjoy your first guild meeting. You know, some of the best relationships, um, the best friendships I've ever had have been with quilters that I've met through the guilds. And it, it's a wonderful, wonderful place to be. So please enjoy and tell them hi from me. So I was going to look back and see if she sent the picture of her quilt. She did not. But while I'm way down here at the bottom, this one is from Jean Velocin. says, Jessica and Jean Hi, Bonnie. We're at Wichita Guild Retreat. Jessica only lives a mile from me. Oh, my Jessica! Hi, girls! So here's Jean and Jessica. There's two of my Kansas friends on retreat. So hello, Kansas girls. Have an absolutely fabulous time on retreat. I miss these girls. They are so fun. I hope to be able to come out and see you again. Hugs to both of you. Love that. They're on retreat. I wish I was there. Paula Barnes Barnett says, current project, half of a butterfly. And she's got this, oh, she's doing that wonderful butterfly quilt. So she's got half of it done up there on her design wall, working with all those gorgeous colors and fabrics. Very, very graphic. I love that. Super. And there are a ton of things in here. So I'm just flipping around. Sally Weir has the subject line of those nine patches. Sally in Northeast Ohio, are those from that PLUS project a couple summers ago? Nope, my PLUS um, nine patches were actually red and neutral, and these were done long before that. I can tell, like, like this little mushroom fabric, this is 1970s, hello, they want their mushrooms back. Um, I know I was gonna use these for an alternate block with something. 
I just don't remember what. And they're made from two inch squares. So the finished size is four and a half. Okay, so I maybe I was going to sash them. Maybe I was going to put them with a snowball. They would look kind of cute on point with a snowball. So maybe we'll just have to come up with uh, another project for these. 193. I think we can knock these out of the ballpark and have a, a quilt in a hurry because there's some really cute ones in here. I love these, these indigo prints. And I remember buying these. These are the South African shui shui, I think they call them now. But they're kind of stiff when you buy them and they're all in a roll. They're like canvas stiff. And you wash them and you wash them and you wash them and they get softer and softer and softer. And they smell like wax. But they're printed with copper plates. So they're done done the old way. They are just gorgeous. I have to do I have to do something with those. Just have to. All right, one more. Carolyn Owen says, En Provence, tomorrow I'll load it on the frame. I'll use an edge to edge to to quilt it. But there's also um, Carolyn. No photo for your en Provence, okay? It's so easy to send off an email and forget the attachment. Kim Heeker says, sewing tonight. Wonderful to have another quilt cam again. I love the progress you have made on your hourglass leaders and enders. Thank you. It feels like it's going very slow. I feel like, like I have not done um, near as much on this. I thought this would be easier than the tumblers. The tumblers went gangbusters. But I just... I feel like I've been dragging my feet on this one. That's okay. Couch size is still good. She says, I'm working on mine in dark and dusty Civil War prints. That's going to be gorgeous. Tonight I'm working on more wild and goosey blocks. Those have got me hooked, I tell you. I'm attaching a photo of what I have so far. And I'm combining four blocks together as pictured in one of the quilts a reader sent to you for your online craftsy course. Awesome! So here's her photo. Oh, those are gorgeous. Looks like a lot of those are Civil War fabrics, which really, really looks nice in this layout. Those are lovely. Just gorgeous. So those are from Kim. All righty. Quit dawdling. Let's pin another one of these together. I have to remember to keep the light one on the upper left. And then try not to put stuff that's too similar together. That seam looks a little crooked. That's okay. You know, some stuff really does quilt out. We like to think that it doesn't, but it does. Fabric moves. It stretches. It eases. It wiggles around. We were, um, this afternoon, I went with my friend Mary to Greensboro. We went out to lunch and went to the antique mall. I'm looking for a cabinet. If we, if we mount the TV over the fireplace where the hubby wants it, there's got to be a cabinet to put like the the satellite box and the the DVR and the do they even call them a DVD player anymore? I don't know. Maybe it's the game box, Xbox, whatever they've got the thing running through. I want it not in the open. I don't want an open shelf with all of that wiry stuff. So it's got to go behind a closed door. So we found a cabinet that I think will work. I just have to take some measurements, but we found some really really pretty antique quilts and they weren't perfect i mean we, we wondered how she got this thing together because the border goes like this and the, the corners of the border come down like this and there were in the center of this feathered star was a circular um block and it looked like kind of a new york beauty kind of a thing she didn't even attempt to put those in straight they were kind of i could put that up on my phone i can show you it was just and it was, it was so inspirational to me because we try so hard to make things so perfect all the time. But yet this had so much life. So this is one of the feathered star blocks. Do you see that New York Beauty thing in the center? Kind of looks like a New York Beauty thing. This one is set fairly straight. She did pretty good with this one. Most of the fabrics are shredded and worn away. Let's see. Was it that one? This one, <laughs> this is more my style. If you do them all a little bit wonky, they all look like you intended them to be that way, right? But I think out of all of the blocks, only one of them was fairly straight. The rest of them were all kind of on a tilt in the center. 
like this. I mean, that's my life. It's just kind of all off kilter. I just loved it. I just loved that. But what patience she had for making this quilt. I'll show you the full. If I turn it this way, you can see. So this is the full quilt. It was only six blocks. But can you see how those borders hang? And they're not the same. And the blocks aren't the same size as each other. And the centers are all weird. And I loved this quilt. I think that we, we struggle too hard for perfection. You know, we want to give it our best shot. But then we beat ourselves up over it. And yet it's those little quirky things that actually give it life. If it was a perfect quilt, it would be beautiful. We'd say, oh, isn't that lovely? But there wouldn't be anything that would keep us there looking at it and staring at it and reflecting on the maker and smiling and laughing and relating to what's going on there. So I am pinning my centers, but if they're not perfect, I'm not taking it out. So far, we haven't broken the thread again. And it'll sew fine, and then all of a sudden, it sounds like when the thread pulls up, that it's caught on something somewhere. So there may be a burr in the in the bobbin case area. Who knows? Okay, that one's a little bit too far off for me. We may re-sew this one. Yeah, my stitching went, mm, yeah, we'll fix that. Okay. <clears throat> that one's worse than the other one. I shouldn't be talking about imperfection while I'm stitching. That's okay. It's staying. That's it. It's staying. Okay. Way to the top. Holly, let's see. Whoops. Feed has dropped. Diane says her feed has dropped, but I'm still showing it live, Diane. So if your feed has dropped, you need to refresh your page and find it again, okay? Because I'm still watching it live, um, both on my tablet and then five seconds later, it's still playing on my Facebook page. So you just need to refresh, okay? Holly Jones says, still working on my split nine patch, going to make a small version for a baby quilt for my upcoming granddaughter. When completed, I'll send pictures. So Holly's been busy with that. Sounds like there's a lot of nine patches happening out there in quilt land. Brenda Middleton, hello, my friend. How are you? She says, happy to be sewing with you tonight. I miss you. I miss you too, girlfriend. It's another uh, fabulous Canadian, very talented, funny girl. Love to be with her. Tonight's project is to finish some half square triangles. 416 of them. No counting, just so they're short seams. She says, when I get them done, I think I'll move on to another project. Oh, those are gorgeous. So she's working with her um, turquoises and neutrals there for her little half square triangles. Beautiful job. I love those. All of those varied neutrals just make me so happy. That's beautiful. Then I won't feel so uh, 193 compared to 416. This is nothing. All right. Hillary says, new quilt top done. I just finished this top done in inch and a half strips. Have fun on your 40 acres. And there's another Canadian friend from Saskatchewan. She has, oh, I love this. This is very cool. Gray and hot pink. They're, they're inch and a half blocks. Whoops, what is that? Well, I'll do this one. Looks like a message was coming in. I'm trying to biggie this so that you can see. So she's made rail fence blocks, paired them right sides together, uh, um, and then sliced them into triangles and sewed them back together. I'm guessing, at least this is how I would have done it if this was similar to my strip twist. Some of them are hold blocks, but some of them are half square triangles put back together. And there are six rails in her full block. See, I'm dissecting this. So I would say these are six inch blocks in this quilt. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. I love that. Okay, so there was this message. Oh, 
Awesome. That says, thanks for the shout out on Quilt Cam. Miss you, my friend. New home too. Looks wonderful. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we do. Um, I, I need to figure out how and when to get friends up to Virginia to have a, a, a girls retreat weekend up there. But I may have a problem keeping the boys away because they want to come play too. So, let's see. Nope. Yep. No, that's three of the same thing again. Maybe this one. Two of the same thing. Eh. So this one. Be sure when you do this, you have enough variety in your triangles because you think you're doing all of this randomness when you're putting them all together. And then when they get to this point where there's 16 greens and or, or eight greens and, and eight neutrals, there are bound to be duplicates happening. <clears throat> and the hubby goes, how are you going to do quilt cam? You have no voice. We'll manage. We'll manage just fine. So I'm, I'm home until I head to Birmingham in um, early April. So I have a while yet. So there's plenty of time to get things set up um, in Virginia the way I want them to be. And then I'm looking forward to that road trip. And there may be, if you are coming to any, any of my Birmingham workshops or lectures, I am still in the mood to pare down the vintage machine collection, which means anything that's duplicate, if I've already got one that's really great of this model, I don't need two or three of them, I may be rehoming some more stuff so that I can adopt more and fix more and find it another home. So I may be, uh, I'm driving to that Birmingham trip. There's three guilds on that loop. I will be loading the van full because who knows what I also may find on that trip. Ta-da! This one turned out okay in the middle. I like it. I like it a lot. And make sure the neutral's at the top. That looks good. We are still working on... Oh, I have so many ideas of what I'd like to do for the next Leader Ender project that some stuff may just have to be next year. I'm still heavily leaning on rail fence. I just have an, an, an itch to use up inch and a half strips. And I think we would do something with maybe some different layouts. You could choose a three rail, four rail, or five rail, or six rail block, depending on what you wanted to do. And I'd like to do something that doesn't require any specialty rulers this year. When we did the tumbler one, um, you know, we had to use special rulers or, or templates for that. And same with this one, although we gave the cutting directions if you wanted to just simply rotary cut, but this, for some, required a specialty ruler. I think we're going to keep it simple for our leader ender challenge this next year, and it's going to be all about the variety that goes into the quilt. So again, we're not going to do anything in any certain color families. It just may be scrappy everything, just separating lights from darks. Ta-da! Look, I'm getting a, a whole pile done. This is awesome. Okay. All the way to the top. Maggie McCormick says feed. The feed is perfectly fine here. So here's the thing. If, if your feed stops, you just need to refresh the page. Because as long as I can see that the camera is still recording and it is over here. And as long as I can see that the feed is then playing on Facebook with the five second delay and it's showing up over here, then I know that and I know that we're that we're good. So if you have a problem, it can be your own connection and you just need to refresh um, your page or close down your browser and reopen it is sometimes a, a thing that I do to get that going. Okay, so she says it all's good there. Mary C says, what I'm working on only 55 days until you're at the Pacific Northwest retreat. Yay! I love going to um, the Pacific Northwest, and it's, it's going to be absolutely um, a beautiful time of year to be there. I'm so excited to see these ladies. Um, Got to get my fabrics together for garden party. Tomorrow is the day to turn in my quilts at our quilt show in Tri-Cities. My farm girl vintage is all done. 
I drew the eyes on with a Pigma pen instead of embroidery. I didn't get my En Provence ready, darn. Hope to get it quilted in time to show you to see. You know what? Don't push it. Bring the top. I'm perfectly fine with seeing a stack of blocks in a Ziploc bag. Just, just bring it. I'd love to see it. We know that quilts don't always just instantly, boom, they're, they're finished. We know that life gets in the way. So whatever stage it's in, bring it. She says, um, my hourglasses aren't sewn all together at all. You're ahead of me. And I'm enjoying Quilt Camp tonight, sharing a picture of my latest flimsy. So, oh, that's pretty. I love the primary colors. So she's made this little sampler quilt. I see lots of reds, yellows, and blues, and greens. That stripy border is absolutely perfect. So that's from Mary. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I see lots of hourglass blocks in there, too. Fun. Stripy border. Love. And this one is from Antoinette in Oregon, who says, thinking of investing in a vintage machine. If you could have only one vintage machine, which one would you choose? Probably the Singer 301, this one. Um, the 301s came in several different colorways. You have the black short bed, which fits in a cabinet, the black long bed that was made for tabletop, there's the mocha, which is it's kind of a putty brown color that was in short bed and long bed. And then the, the two-tone, which is, they call it elbow, light beige oyster white, which I just, I like to call it the Bel Air because it's like a Bel Air car. The two-tone, the, the cream and, and uh, tan came in a, did it come in a long bed also or did it only come in short bed to be in a cabinet? I don't remember. Um, they're the big sister to the featherweight but I much prefer them over a featherweight because of the speed and the power. There's no belted motor. It's all metal gears. It's, it's, it's gear driven. Um, it does 1200 stitches a minute. It's a slant needle. So it's easier for me to see where the needle is hitting when I am sewing. I can't sing the praises of these machines um, loud enough. Love, love, love these machines. Um, the Singer 201 runs a close second, but it weighs 43 pounds. This one weighs 14 pounds, and it's got the carry handle, so I can just lift it up and um, take it right out of the cabinet. I don't have to, it, it'll just come right out of the cabinet, snaps in and out. Um, what else, if I if I could only have one machine? Um, I You know, it, de it depends on how you like to sew. There's uh, the next series up from this. This was a 300 series. In the 400 series, there's a model number 404, which has exactly the same workings as the 301. It's got the same motor. It's gear driven. It's all metal. However, it's up, been upgraded and improved. So instead of the small underneath bobbin, you have a large class 66 bobbin that's drop front. Because it's a drop front bobbin, you get to thread the needle straight on front to back. There's not a lot of bells and whistles. It's a straight stitch only machine. But if you're just getting interested in vintage machines, you cannot go wrong with a 404. Right now, they are very reasonably priced. Um, I've predicted that um, over the next while, as the price of the 301s has greatly increased in the, in the last five years, um, as people become more aware of them, that the 404 is the next up and comer because of what it does. It doesn't do any zigzag stitches. It doesn't um, have anything fancy, but there's a lever on the top for dropping your feed dogs for free motion quilting. And because you've got that larger class 66 bobbin that just drops right here, it, it's perfect for free motion quilting and you can go for quite a while without having to change your bobbin. So those would be my, my two, the 301, and the 404 just for portability because you want to take it to quilt class you don't want to carry around a 43 pound boat acre um give give them a try i if you try the 404 i i guarantee you're you're gonna love it you're gonna love it so um those are my two let's sew one more of these light at the top on the left that will work <clears throat> Sadie came in to say hello. She's over there on the floor looking at me like, who are you talking to, Mom? Tomorrow, I still may head up 
to the cabin, even if the, the gas guys aren't coming. And this weekend she will be coming with us, so we will have her out exploring her new surroundings and see how that goes. You just wonder what's going on in the mind of a dog. It's, they, they are very creatures of habit, you know, they have their favorite place to lay, they like their favorite toys, they like their favorite treats, and they, they know their surroundings, whether it's their permanent home or their second home, they're familiar with it, and then you take them somewhere new, and it kind of upsets their apple cart. So we're hoping she does well. The squeak that this one had is finally all gone. The oil worked its way down that shaft and it finally just went away. Yep, you pass. Who says you can't have Halloween spider fabric uh, in, in a regular scrap quilt? I love it. So there's some spider webs, there's some sailor anchors, there's just a bunch of fun little green stuff. We're going to get this these borders put together and hopefully they'll be on tonight. That's my... Um, my plan. I can't believe it's already nine o'clock. We need to wrap this up here. Okay, so one more. This is from Daryl. Says what I'm working on. Hey Bonnie, Daryl, aka D Quilter guy here. First time catching you live from the very beginning. So hey Daryl, how are you? Here's what I'm working on. Four in nine blocks using Civil War fabrics. Completed 28 blocks so far. How, love how these blocks are coming together so quickly, hoping to make a throw size. So here's our here are four of his together. I've also got mine set in a bin um, over behind me somewhere. This also needs to come back out and play. Um, I love these, Daryl. These are great, and I love your indigos. They remind me of these. Love those. Nine patch blocks on parade. So here's some other ones he's got going here. I love the red, white, and blue of this. And this would look amazing just sashed just like that. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you for sharing those, Daryl. So glad you could join us tonight. Hope that you'll be able to join us again in the future. Ann Barrett says, Essential Triangle Tool. Hello from Ann in Norfolk, UK. Today I started as, as such a good day. I received my Essential Triangle Tool in the post. Then I heard on the radio about a terrorist attack in London. Oh, no. Oh, no, I haven't heard about this. So sad. Five killed and 40 injured. Some of the survivors' injuries are so severe it will change their lives forever. Um, thanks for letting us know, Anne. Uh, I, I'm flabbergasted. I'm really, this just makes me so sad. Um, let's all keep these people in, in our hearts and in our prayers. And uh, I don't know what we're going to do to make this stop. You know, we want the world to be a safe place, a safe place for our children and um, where our grandchildren can grow free and strong. Um, how can we, how do we get past this? Uh, hmm. You know, I've only been to London once, and it's such a beautiful city, and this, this just, just, just saddens me. So um, thanks for letting us know, and we will keep those folks in our thoughts and our prayers, and I hope that we may be able to crack down and stop this from happening. Vicki Beasley says, what I'm working on during quilt cam, I'm working on big stitch quilting tonight, and this is my first quilt to do via big stitch. So she's showing. I'm going to biggie size this a little bit. I love your little log cabin blocks with a four patch in the middle. They make little spots and dots of squares in the border. Very cute. So she's doing some big stitch quilting on this. Super, super nice. Love that, Vicky. So good to hear from you. And this one, Julie says, here are my starstruck blocks that were started at the class. In Bozeman, I just need to lay them out and stitch them together. Uh, stripes and dots. I've included a picture of my blue heaven done in black and white with turquoise. 
So she says, oh, well, regarding the, the tag issue, vehicles that are 13 years or older can be permanently licensed. Don't have to worry about tags each year. So here are, here is her My Blue Heaven. I don't think I've owned a 13 year old vehicle for a while. Maybe those are the ones you don't want on the road. <laughs> I don't know. But here's her My Blue Heaven. I love how that blue border sets off her colors in the center. That's just beautiful. And then her other one was with the stripes and the dots for her Starstruck blocks. Oh, those are going to spin. So her Starstruck blocks are polka dots and stripes. Going to be a lot of fun. Both of those patterns are found under the free patterns tab at the top of the blog. Okay. So here we are. A little more than an hour gone by. My voice is failing even, even more now after talking. And my heart is in my throat after reading about London. So... I think this is a good time for me to go silent. And um, wow. I'm glad that we have quilting to get us through. I'm glad that our love of quilting and the love of fabric ties us together. And I'm glad that the best thing that we do with quilts is give them to those in need and to those that we love. And um, I'm glad that when I am upset or fearful or angry or frustrated or can't find the words to express my feelings that I can throw myself into my quilting and work my way through. And by the time I leave my room, I'm, I've somewhat come to my wits and um, settled things in my heart a bit better. So for those who are hurting, uh, our stitching is for you. Um, next quilt cam. Probably when I, when I get back from, from Alabama, it's going to be Easter time. If I don't catch you before I leave for Alabama, we'll do it. Um, I, I get back like the day before Easter. So then there's Easter Sunday and then there's Monday. And then I fly to Texas for teaching in Texas. So my April is going to be kind of very full, making up for my March that was quite light so um be watching on the blog be watching on facebook and i will let you know when we can squeeze one in i definitely want to do this again as soon as possible hopefully the allergies will be gone by then uh, if it's still early where you are don't stop sewing now just because it's nine o'clock and time for me to head to bed but keep sewing make some progress let it be the first thing that you see in the morning and feel proud of what you were able to accomplish today love each other more Let's, let's turn on the kindness to those around us. Um, wow, my heart just hurts. Um, until next time, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sharing your love of quilting with me. And thank you for the community that you've helped to build here in Quiltville. I will catch you next time. Until then, stay scrappy. Good night, everybody.